This an all out blitz. Real hard hits. The mother podcast trash. We gon' make them all quit. We cover all the topics with intelligence and logic. I know you wanna score, but ID gon' stop it. We from Texas. So that mean that we Texans. Breaking down the X's and O's, our profession. No complaining, just training. You see the progression. They had a pro bowl for talk shows. We get selected. We gon' celebrate every win like a birthday. Ray J with the news. First with all the updates. Spin move on the competition. Yeah, we juking them. You not really in touch if you not tuning in. This is Crin Sharp Briggs and VT. We want the touchdown. We not trying to go for three. And it's best if you get up out the street. Cause them bulls out the pen and they bout to stampede. Welcome to the Texans Fan Battle Podcast, hosted by the Fan Battle Sports Network. I'm your host, Matthew Briggs, and always with me, I got my amazing trio. First off, let's start off with my A1 since day one, Mr. Crenshaw. What's up, buddy? How you doing? And guys, you know this guy very well because he argues with everybody. We got Mr. VT himself. What up, what up, what up? Guys, we got a special guest in the building tonight. Y'all know him off of 610 in the loop. We got Landry Locker. How you going, bud? Man, I'm doing good. That video, you already you already got the new highlights and everything. You're you are on top of the game. I yeah. I enjoy enjoy talking to you guys. Like the passion, uh, the, the viewpoints. Uh, you are right. Brown Chubby Bear is a crazy sob, but that's why we love him. Oh uh, well, we got a comment already. Landry Seafood is greater than Landry Locker. That is true. That is yeah. true. It's a very underrated establishment, actually. I don't know why it doesn't get more love, but I am a Landry Seafood fan. But that is that is a fact. Well, you were kind of telling us you were you're a, a firework expert, real quick, Landry. In, in celebration of Fourth of July, what is the most underrated firework of all time? Um, the most underrated firework of all time, if you can find it, it's it's three hundred and fifty gram cakes. Like five hundred gram cakes are the ones that people buy the most, but it's the three fifties are actually more compact. There's a there's a cake if you can ever find it. It's a brother's thing. It's called Jaws. It's Ooh, called Jaws, and I it's back in the day. Yeah. 35 40 bucks it's it's got an alligator on it because i think they didn't want copyright but it's called jaws and it has an alligator and then there's something called firework fiesta um that is uh that is is very good bang for your buck that's that's what i would go with if, if i would get something like that all right well let's kick it off with some nfl news you, you down with that Landry? for sure all right Well, latest news, ESPN is cutting everybody and your mama. Everybody's getting fired. They're getting the pink slips. Landry, I'll start with you, man. Who is the most surprising cut of all? Um, I don't know that I was surprised uh, by any of them. I, I think they had to, they had to, you know, make some decisions. I will say, I, I know someone who's gotten let go by ESPN. Th those people are still going to get their full contract. So it's not like one of us getting fired. The ESPN, like those, those people are still going to get their um their contracts i guess you could say Susie colber um but oh, yeah. she i mean she was working you know probably not a ton and they have girls like lauren rutledge and stuff like that that are probably ready to go and probably need to be elevated so i was a little surprised by Susie. i was actually surprised about todd mcshay too because i just kind of thought that at some point him and kuiper were a package deal um i do know that mcshay or uh yeah yeah todd mcshay had gone through some things and I guess they kind of, I mean, if you, I, I know they were real supportive of it, but if you, if you kind of have a situation where you allow your employer, your network to kind of see what it's like without you. And you have guys like Jordan Reed uh, that I think does a really good job of, uh, of covering the draft and you have some of the guys coming up. I think it kind of, kind of goes there, but I, I guess I was surprised by McShay. Um, but really, other than that, I didn't like, I didn't really like lose. Van Gundy was weird too, but from an NFL perspective, I would say McShay. Okay. BT, what about you? Well, I don't know if I was surprised necessarily about anyone that got let go, but um, I think I was more surprised about some of the reactions because a lot of people were blaming Pat McAfee, but I don't really think that Pat McAfee is to be blamed. Um, first of all, if anyone of us, if anyone ever got their chance of going to ESPN, you're going to take it. So obviously he did. But it seems like 
to me that they made that decision well before um, they signed Pat McAfee there. And it's understandably why, right? We, like so many people, even us, are watching stuff on YouTube or listening to podcasts as opposed to ESPN. So they had to change the game. So, But I just found it interesting that he got a lot of the hate um, because of, of what the alleged contract that he has. Okay. Kern saw? Um, like I would wasn't surprised. I really wasn't really sad for those guys. Like what um, Landry said, it's not like it was Rich Lord or Mike Messler when they got fired. I felt that because I grew up, especially Rich, listening to those guys. So, and they'll bounce back. They'll be okay. So that's my take on that right there. Yeah, I got I got to agree with you, Landry. The uh, uh, Ben Gundy was kind of like shocking a little bit because he just did just killed the NBA Finals. Like he did a fantastic job with Mark Jackson, and then all yeah. of a sudden he was like, "Whoa, all right, we're not kidding." So, yeah, it's yeah. crazy. I don't know what they're gonna do with that. I don't know if they thought maybe Jeff was gonna be done when his contract expired. So, you know, maybe uh, pay him and try to develop someone and get them a little bit more familiar. But yeah, that was surprising because that's like your that's your A team NBA guy. So I guess I guess that was a little bit of surprise, um, but. I mean, I, I think ESPN need, needs to kind of rebrand. I think it's good that they're, you know, going to put McAfee there with Stephen A. I don't know how much longer Stephen A is really going to do this. I think he's I think he might have, like, bigger aspirations, it kind of seems like. He's doing his web show a lot, it seems like, the FanDuel thing, and he's touching on other stuff. Um, but I like I like that they're bringing in McAfee, kind of kind of revamping things because – They've made some mistakes, I think, in the past. I think they kind of turned their back on radio a little bit too quickly um, because I was actually I was actually at ESPN Radio, like one of the five branches, like the Dallas branch before, and they had only five branches that they were putting a lot of money into, and they ended up kind of like cutting the cord on radio, and you can kind of hear it like even on the national perspective. And I feel like if they'd gone more in on radio and just focused on the digital side, I think they could have – been what pat mcafee is like they could have brought in some guys and been that and now it just seems like they're kind of adjusting with some of the decisions they made the espn plus i don't know if y'all subscribe to that but i mean they needed they needed to make some sort of splash and uh that's that's what they did but i mean in a world where we all know someone and i'm not trying to be mr well you know that, that they make millions of dollars guy but like in a world where we know especially the last few years we all know people that are getting you know, let go of their jobs and they get like a month of severance or something like that. I, I wouldn't feel too bad for Steve Young because he uh, he lost his gig or something like that or Keyshawn or, you know, those guys. What I also think is what, what hurt in ESPN is is uh, more of the broadcasting and like more of the uh, reality. They love the reality more. Uh, reality TV is killing TV, period, as it, I mean, yeah, you're That's, talking about drama and stuff like that. Yeah, right. And it seems like they're stepping away from the actual broadcast and trying to go. You know, I, I think that's why uh, Stephen A. Smith is so popular because you know it's he he's reality at, at his finest. You know, yeah. saying crazy stuff at any time. You know, so he's the originator of it. I think. I right. think it's. I don't think it's necessarily bad. I think drama and and I, and I know I know VT's up there smiling because his ass dang sure ain't gonna separate. Dang sure better not try to do that, my friend. Um, but I think I think if it's authentic and it's actually like has some substance, it's good. But what I think ESPN has done is there's been like forced, you know, and there's been mm -hmm. like people. I, you, you can see it with Orlovsky a lot, and I think even Mina does it, and they both do their thing. They're trying to do a GIF, and they're they're focusing more on like gifts. Like the best example I can use is I don't think ESPN is focused on what's good on TV, and they haven't been able to separate it from online. Like Brian Windhorst, I'll use Brian Windhorst as an example. Like he does that dumbass like finger thing. <laughs> it's the worst F in TV I've ever seen in my life. It's garbage. It's trash. And as a result of it, because it goes viral, they give it more TV time and they do a whole segment on it. It's like, okay, it's funny online, but the dude was terrible on TV. So I don't think they've really been able to separate, you know, Twitter and all that stuff from like the actual broadcast. I think they've, they've kind of made that mistake a little bit, but we'll see what happens. I think McAfee does a good job. And I, oh, yeah. I think with those resources, he's going to be pretty good. Uh, hopefully he stays authentic and stays true to himself, which I, I don't see any reason why he wouldn't. 
Well, one thing, I mean, you brought up, you know, um, like the Twitter and, and all the social media stuff. And I think that's one thing that their their talent doesn't really have is that they have their their TV presence, but they don't really have a huge social media presence. Sure, people retweet and stuff, but in terms of bringing people from social media to ESPN, that isn't happening. Yeah. Um, you know, so I think that's part of the problem that they have. They aren't able to be everywhere, right? They don't have their own YouTube channel, their own doing Twitter that's popular uh, enough to actually bring people to say, hey, I know you from YouTube. Now I'm going to watch on, e on ESPN. So I, I think they just haven't really been updated. They just are stuck in the old ways and, and you know, kind of hit everyone at the same time. Yeah. Well, you know, speaking of reality TV, uh, Hard Knocks is coming back, and it seems like the Jets are going to be forced to do it. I, BT is, like, being a hard, so hard so bit. Yeah, so hard about the Texans being on there. So I, I'm, I, I mean, I, can't, I don't really want it, especially being D'Amico's first year, but – uh, BT's hard on, on the Texans being uh, on the hard knocks pause. But Landry, I, I'll start with you. What, what do you think about all this? I think the Jets are the right pick. I think I think it's the right pick for, is the Jets. I mean, it's it's kind of a no-brainer. When you have Aaron Rodgers, you have the New York media, you have uh, Sauce Gardner. Sauce, I mean, yeah. You have, you know, you have Robert Sala, who's got a nice presence about him. You just have a lot going on. But I, I think it's kind of a no-brainer. Um as far as the Texans doing it, I mean, I I wouldn't hate it, um, but I wouldn't. I'm not like. Maybe we can wait a year or two before that happens. I, I I would I would anticipate they'll be on Hard Knocks the next three years, maybe three or four, something like that. But I think the Jets was the right call. All right, Big T. We know you, you you're not happy with it at all, but go no, ahead. I'm Listen, I'm not happy at all. Remember when we had Drew Doherty on the show here? Um, he agreed with me, which is that. We were likely going to go into, no matter what happened in the offseason, we were likely going to go into the fourth losing season. And Landry, I know that one of the things that you said was that the fans were apathetic this past season. Um, and I know that too. When I, when I flew down, people called themselves Texans fans, but didn't know who we were playing next week. So, you know, I was at the bars and stuff and talking to people and yeah, they're like, yeah, Texans, yeah, yeah, yeah. And who we play next week? Oh, I have no clue. I mean, they had no idea who was starting in, 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 in different positions. They were they just didn't care. Yeah, they call themselves Texans fans, but that's about it. And I think that hard knocks would have helped bring more people and, and become fans, even though that I think we're gonna win like seven games, so we're gonna have a losing season again. But I think that you know, the Lions, they haven't been good for a long time. Yeah, they have a good coach now and stuff like that. But I think one of the reasons why their fans stuck with them is because they had national attention. They were getting talked about nearly every day because of hard knocks. And that helped fans, you know, go to the stadium. That helped people outside, uh, out of the market, be interested in the Lions. I think that that's what hap would have happened with the Texans because I think D'Amico has a great personality. We have players with great personalities. I think that we would have fed off that. And unfortunately, they didn't do it. Like, if I was Kyle, I would have volunteered and said, you know, they're doing so many things to bring the fan base back, right? He's grilling burgers. He's... You know, he, um, he the jersey buyback and all this other stuff, the fan council. He's doing so many things to bring the fans back that Hard Knocks would have been the ultimate here you go, um, you know, fan service. And he chose not to do it. So, yeah, I, 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 think, I think that was a missed opportunity. BT, you know why else they were talk the Lions were being talked about? They were, got excited, they were exciting to watch. The Texans are not. Chris but we will be exciting to watch this year. That's why I'm saying, like, we, like we can a hope. new quarterback. We, we can hope a new quarterback, a new head coach, a, a new OC. Like that we have, can, we have all the exciting. That can be unexciting, though. A rookie quarterback in first year that can be unexciting. It can be sure, but <laughs> I think we have the formula set, and our knocks would have helped us have fans not be apathetic. What I, what I, I see think, what you're saying. I see what you're saying. But I, I'm just saying that's why they were being talked about. The, the eight best offense in the NFL. That's what, you know. I'll, I'll, I'll stop talking about one minute. I just want to say this. I have a feeling that we will only win one, maybe two. But I really only think we'll win one game before the bye. And I hope that fans don't check out before then. Because I have a real feeling that that's going to happen. And Chris, shots fired by Crumpler. Shots fired by Crumpler. You're trying to sabotage D'Amico. Why are you trying to do that? <laughs> Man, I, I mean, I, I don't think it's a sabotage, honestly. Um, you know, even Drew, Drew said, it, like, yeah, coaches don't like it, but 
you know, listen, our year that we on that we went to the playoffs, it's not sabotage. I think people think that it hurts more than it actually does. It, it doesn't. Chris, I, I, I think the lines was so popular because the Tigers and the Pistons suck. So that's the only thing good in Detroit. See, here in Houston, you know, we got the Astros and everything. But can a rookie coach be on Hard Knocks first year? They can volunteer. They can't be forced. Okay. So, you know, he maybe they could have asked him. Or well, maybe he wanted to. Like, nah, let, let me chill out for a little bit. Let, let's see the product first. And like Landry said, two or three years down the line, I don't think it's in the world that we're not on Hard Knocks. Because um, I want to see product on the field first before, you know, we see behind the scenes and everything. But I think the Jets the right call because the Jets could be an interesting team. They don't make the playoffs this year, man. Everything was a, a failure. Mm-hmm. So I can't wait to watch them. Well, the Brees Hall come back and everything, Aaron Rodgers. So I think Jets the right call, man. All right. Well, Landry, let's get in here while we're here. Let's talk some Texans news. You're high with me, you can slide with me, you feel like 550 on the fly stick. You can get high with me, that's a deal, right? Ride with me if you're right. All right. Well, first off, uh, Jay and Waddle was on Channel 2, KPRC, and he said the most underrated player was Jalen Petrie in the safety backfield. Landry, is he right? He he said he was the most underrated DB. I, I don't know. I think Jalen Petrie's rated about where – where he probably should be. I, I, I don't, you know, I, I actually think the most underrated uh, DB in the division is Tyson Campbell uh, for the Jags. Um, Tyson Campbell last year was, I think he was in PFF's top 80. Uh, I put him number 10 on my list of best players uh, in the AFC South of 2023. Um, I don't think Tyson Campbell's gotten enough love. He played every game. He was on the outside. Um, Jalen missed a lot of tackles last year. And, I, and I'm not saying it was his fault or anything like. I mean, I'm not saying it was all his fault. I mean, obviously, when you have you're that soft up front, um, that's a problem. He also had five interceptions, so I think there's expectations for for him. I just don't. I, I just don't think that Petrie. I wouldn't consider him underrated at this point. You, you need more body of work, right? I mean, you gotta see. See yeah, more. and I think people know that he's got a lot of talent. D'Amico raves about him, and, you know, it seems like the league has some respect for him. So I, I wouldn't call him underrated at, at this point. I, I would say he's good, and I would say he has a lot of potential. And I, But I, I feel like people know that. I don't think very many people talk about Tyson Campbell. Okay. Well, Chris, I'll, I'll, I can get off to you. I think that was just Jalen showing um, Houston some love. He's from the age, and I think he's just showing some love. I don't think Petrie's underrated. Who I think is underrated, I can't pronou- pronounce his last name. I think his first name is Armani. He played for the Lions, but I think he, he with the um, Giants now. You guys know that guy? He's a DB. Armani. Shit, I can't pronounce his last name. Some some crazy last name. I think he's underrated, and maybe the David Long kid from the Rams is, is underrated. But – Petrie, nah, man, the people know who he is. So I think he was just sticking up for the Texans. And he was on a, 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 a Texans uh, show. I mean, you know, local show as well. So they're just for the fans to talk about. All right, BT, uh, we, we know you're a Petrie man. So go ahead and tell us. Yes, I am a Petrie man. And yeah, I think he's completely underrated. Listen, I know he missed 36 tackles. But as you were saying, Landry, it wasn't necessarily all his fault. Um, we had really no p- pass rush to speak Damn, of. He was keeping those stats. Did he get to keep his own stats, keep his own score? 36 tackles? He had to, he missed more than 36 tackles last year, though. I don't no, know. No, he missed 36. That's so not- he missed, he's missed 36. He had 147. But the problem is, we, we had two DBs would be the lead tackle. So anytime on a team, your DBs are the lead tacklers, you've got a problem with your front seven. That is not on Petrie. Secondly, they they played him wrong. They played him at strong safety first before he was free safety. All his all his real um, stats came from after they moved him. Right besides the Bears, besides the Bears game, almost all his stats really were after they moved him. So they played him wrong. Right, they played Stingley wrong and they played uh, Petrie wrong. So you know, if you talk about like w- why he had those thirty six missed tackles, it's not on him. It was on coaching and it was on bad roster construction. Why do I think he's underrated? Because there hasn't been a rookie that has performed like him that had either one hundred twenty five tackles and five interceptions since two thousand. So this guy has been the first in two decades to actually accomplish that. I think the only reason he doesn't get his love is because we're on the Houston Texans. Uh, he's on the Houston Texans. I think he should have been at least a pro bowler last year. 
Um, and I think that he should be an all pro this year. I'm very high on Petrie. I think that's probably Nick Casario's best draft pick so far that he's made. And so I think that he's going to have a great season this year with the better pass rush, um, better coaching. I think that the only reason if he doesn't make an all pro, honestly, it's either because of injury, God forbid, or that, you know, we have, don't have a good season and, you know, we have a five wins or something. And it's a, listen, the pro bowl, all pro, it's a popularity contest. Um, and if you're not winning games, then you're not, and, and, you, and especially if you have no primetime games, no one's going to really care about you. So I think that he's actually not getting what he deserves because he's on the Texans, not because of his inability or anything like that. I got to kind of agree with uh, Landry a little bit. I, I, I don't think he's underrated quite as yet because there's no really body of work, right? Like, I mean, it's his rookie year. So you can't really base it off every, anything off except for one year. So uh, you have to give a couple more years to see if he's underrated or overrated. I, I just think it's hard for a rookie to either be either, you know, overrated, underrated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you got you got to let the man cook. So, and I could see him being a Pro Bowler for sure. I just don't. I don't know too many people that are really sleeping on him, especially here. I mean, we are we are very high on uh, on him, uh, Petrie. But I'm I'm intrigued to see what he does. I, I, I maybe if he has a good enough season, VT will actually let his jersey get in like the full. <laughs> <laughs> I I, I I I didn't know what that was. I thought that was a Joe Webb jersey or something like that. <laughs> I can't really tell. I know. Oh. How you going to have Nico Collins in the middle, man? Come on now, man. Yeah, you got to put Petrie in the middle. Especially, yeah. it's not even Nico's, like, game. We got we to gotta switch those out. Mm, I played around with it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, well, let's keep on the same subject of underrated. Uh, Landry, on YouTube and social media, us three, we, we made a list of who we thought was the most underrated player of all time. Mine, of course, was the great Owen Daniels. Uh, Crenshaw's was Dominic Davis or Dominic Williams, whatever, which one you want to call him. <laughs> and BT's, of course, was Matt Schaub. So, Landry, who who do you think picked it right? And and who's your most over, underrated uh, Texan player? My my most underrated would be um, Arian, and I know that sounds crazy. I just don't. I don't think we truly. I don't think we truly look at Arian um, uh, like nationally and realize that that three year stretch that he had. It's it's Priest Holmes like, and Priest Holmes is in the Chiefs Ring of Honor. And if you look at if you look at Arian, you look at that three year stretch. You get the stats, and then you even have it, it, it's not a complete fall off after the three years with the injuries. I actually think Arian Foster is underrated because he's the one player outside of J.J. Watt and maybe Andre in specific years, although it's a much more competitive position, but where for an extended period of time, you could argue that guy's the best player at his position. Like Arian Foster, you can make a case for three years. That guy's the best running back in the NFL. And I don't think enough people outside of Houston um, really completely, uh, you know, grasp that or understand that. So I would – I would say Arian would be would be my guy just because I don't think he I don't think he gets his proper due. I also think Will Fuller when he was and I know this sounds stupid because he completely fell off and he always got hurt. But when when Deshaun was starting off like when and Fuller came back and Will Fuller was out there with Deshaun and Nuke Hopkins, he was a fool with it. Like if you look at just Will Fuller, Will Fu Will Fuller with Deshaun Watson was an absolute full with it and to i it's amazing what's what's kind of happened to will i know a lot of it is is injuries but i thought i thought will was incredibly underrated all right well i was three who who do you think got the closest to it i know it's opinion but um it's definitely not shaw because <laughs> VP overrates him, VP <laughs> overrates him. Uh, I, I think Dominic was good uh, for sure. So I, I would probably say Crenshaw with Dominic just because I think Owen gets his flowers. I think I think we know that Owen is the uh, is is the greatest Texans tight end uh, of all time. But yeah, Dominic was good for for that stretch before what happened to running backs happened to him. So here's another question uh, before I kicked it off with BT and Crenshaw. Um, me, BT, kind of had a text there. Do you think Owen Daniels ever makes the Ring of Honor, say, 10, 15 years down the road? No, I don't think so. Think so? Um, no, I, no. I think, you know, we had Hannah and Cal on, and I asked Hannah, you know, what are we going to do here? And I, I think they're going to make it more exclusive. I think it's going to get a little bit, you know, more difficult um, for people to get in. You have two 
probable Hall of Famers up there right now. And I think they're going to be, you know, they're not going to judge everyone just based on, you know, you how you did for the Texans. I think they're going to try to get all time greats. And until they start winning, I don't think they're I don't think they're really going to do that. So I think they're I don't think they're in any hurry. I, mm-hmm. I think the next person to get in will be um, maybe Vandermeer when he retires, like they'll have like a microphone or something um, just because he's been the voice since day one. Um, and then I don't know. You don't think Foster makes it? I don't know. I know. I know he's in good standing. I, I do. I, I do think the biggest, the best case I can make for Aaron Foster is that if Priest Holmes is in the Chiefs Ring of Honor and the Chiefs have a long history and they have a, they've had a lot of success. Uh, if you put that up there, I, I think you could make a case uh, for Arian. The problem they're going to have is like if you put Jonathan Joseph up there, then that just opens up a lot of debate. And I like I like J. Joe. Um, but I, I think they're going to be more exclusive, at least based on what she said. And they want, you know, they want more winning uh, to be able to put some people up there. OK. Our OVT, we'll cook more about you. Well, obviously, I think uh, I was right with Matt Schaub. And I the reason why I think he's underrated is because. If he didn't get hurt, I, I do believe we were on our way to get a ring or at least a Super Bowl appearance. Uh, I think that Liz Frank really just was a downward spiral to his career. Um, Matt did correct me. It, it wasn't two quarterbacks. It was three quarterbacks that hit uh, 527 in a, in a game. Um, so, you know, there's only three quarterbacks that have done it. One of them was Matt Schaub. I do think he's underrated. I think a lot of people. It was only, overtime, though. I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, there's only three quarterbacks that have done it. Um, so, so I think a lot of people just associate him with pick sixes and they don't really remember the rest of the stuff. I mean, the bottom line is injury. On, they remember it. Uh, if you, I mean, listen, I, I, I'm talking to a bunch of Texas fans and they do not like him. And I'm telling you, I think that they like complete- him. They like him. They just, he just wore out a little bit. There ain't no Texas fan that doesn't like Matt Shop. Oh my God. There's a, there's a lot. There's a ton of Texas fans that hate his guts. Okay, but th- but they were living in the moment. They, it, when you take a step back, you can realize that Shop was a good quarterback. There, I mean, yeah, he pissed a lot of people off, the pick sixes and all that, and, and he fell off. But there's some love for Matt Shop. You saying he's better than Deshaun, I think, is a little bit little bit silly now. No, I, I think you need to get out of your feelings and admit that Deshaun was better than Matt Shop. Deshaun was a victim of a bad system. Shop was a beneficiary of a bad uh, of a, of a great system. Deshaun did not have Andre Johnson, although he did have Nuke, which you can have the discussion there. He did not have Arian Foster. Deshaun is better than Matt Schaub. We got it. We got you got it. You got to look in the mirror and just say to yourself, I, I want you to like have a peace of mind to just say to yourself, just say Deshaun is better than Matt Schaub. And if Deshaun had switched with Matt Schaub, there wouldn't be any if. They would have definitely won a Super Bowl, maybe two or three. I will never say that. Uh, first of all, he didn't have the longevity. We can't say that he's a better quarterback. Just if you look at the numbers, he had like 10,000 less yards than shot. How can he be the better quarterback when the numbers don't show it? If, if he had the wins or something, then maybe, yeah, you can make the argument that even though he didn't have the longevity, he had the wins, but he didn't have the wins. Um, he, he had a short career here. So there's no way that you could say he's a better quarterback because of what could have been. Because you could say what could have been for a lot of players. Like you okay, said, so, okay, Will so, Fuller, but I mean. Is Frank Gore better than Jim Brown? I, I mean, you, listen. I mean, <laughs> longevity, I'm asking, like, is he? Right, right. Earl Campbell, Barry Sanders, I mean, Megatron. I mean, is Frank but, Gore better than Earl Campbell? I mean, the, the bottom line is when it comes to the Houston, because we're saying Houston particularly, right? We're, we're talking about the Texans. And the bottom line is that uh, Deshaun Watson can't be just because he was here for such a short period of time. I mean that disqualifies him. It, I, but I but mean, Matt Sharp had a great team around him, man. The the offensive line, the defense, he had everything around him. The coaches, most great staff, quarterbacks have great teams around them. Look at look at the coaching staff then, and look at those guys now. Most of those guys are head coaches now. So he had more things that Deshaun had. Like I say, I, I I'm not a fan of what happened with the Watson thing, but nah, he for, be the, for the skill set, Watson. It's a better quarterback than Matt Shaw. You know that in your heart, VT. You're just it, the bottom line, he just wasn't here long enough to make that determination. If he was here long enough, yeah, that would have to be changed. But even that short period of time, he showed that he's a better quarterback, though. You, you can't gotta, say you admit what that. could have been, right? Again, it, it's a hypothetical. If he was here long enough, you're right. He would have been better than Matt Shaw. There's no doubt about it. But the fact is he was here for such a short period of time that he can't make that list for me. Too short. Okay. All but, right. uh, like, like Mike say, fair. 
Fair. Yeah, yeah fair. 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 All right. Well, we know we're crunched for time, Landry. So we're going to jump to a fan favorite of who is Landry Locker. <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay. Uh, all right. You, are you ready? Let's eat. All right, man. BT, I'll let you kick it off. All right. I got to know how your love of 90 Day Fiance and all these reality TV shows started. Because I, I know the ways that I, I watched those for a period of time. But your answer when I asked you, like, how – I need to know the whole full story. I just always happen? liked reality TV. I don't know why. I I did. Uh, my parents got divorced, and I, I did live with uh, my mom and sister for like a little bit of time. But even then, I like the shows more than them. Like I like the shows more than my wife. Like I, you can't make me go watch a Marvel comic movie. And I used to watch. I used to collect like collect that stuff in fifth grade. But if you give me like sports and raunchy ass reality TV, I'll watch it. I don't know why. I'm not proud of it, but it is what it is. I just. Just enjoy it. I just enjoy it. It's 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 unrealistic yet somewhat realistic. I like watching everybody else's problems. I just enjoy it. So before I move on to Grant Saul's question, is the challenge in your top ten of reality shows? I like the challenge. I haven't watched it as much, like in the prime CT days, like when CT was just Beast. big body Beast. and he's the yeah. goat of it. Uh, I was in it, but it, the more that Johnny Bananas got pushed, I was just kind of like, man, I don't really like watching him as much. So I, I kind of went away from from the challenge a little bit. But but anything else like that is is up there. But the challenge was nice, man. TJ was a good host. Uh, CT when CT carried bananas on the back. Oh yeah, that dude. Him up and put him on his shoulders. Yeah. Oh, that has to be. Yeah, right that there. has to be like history. Yeah. And, and, that was you know, beast mode right there. Yeah. All right, Chris. So what's your question? Um, earlier you you were saying that um you worked in Dallas and um, I hope this you no know, don't start no controversy or anything. Um, <laughs> which fans are worse, the Houston fan base or the Dallas fan base? <laughs> I would say I would say that the Cowboys fan base is worse just because there's there's a lot there's a lot more of them. You know, there's there's people all over the place. Um, there's a lot of passion. Um, Jerry Jones is a mastermind when it comes to drama and understanding stuff like that. So, um, I would say like if you're just talking about like the worst representation, I think all fans can be equally as bad. But as far as just the smoke and the venom and stuff like that, it's it's for sure it's for sure Cowboys fans. Y'all see it. There's, there's what what about the ones that you, like you like call into the show and everything? Oh yeah, that's uh, that that's that's hit or miss. That's that's hit or miss. <laughs> it's it's been it's been rough, but yeah, it's got to be. Uh, it's got Houston. Houston fans are great, man. I don't really fan like fan anger and stuff like that, and fan passion and irrational. It really doesn't bother me, um, but. Cowboy fans, there's just so damn many of them, man. And a lot of them, you know, I know VT was pissed off because he was trying to talk about the too deep at bars when people were just trying to get fucked up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but there are some Cowboy fans who probably couldn't even tell you who the starting quarterback is. All right. Um, so Mavericks fans or Rockets fans? Um, that's a tie. That's that's tough. The NBA, the NBA is uh, – see, Mar uh, Mark Cuban developed kind of like a culture of whining. So there's a lot of like whining and like <laughs> bitching about refs, but it's kind of the same thing with the Rockets at times. Not quite as bad, but I would say I would say Mavs back uh, like early Cuban. He kind of developed like a bitching about the refs type of mindset. All right. Well, before I, I ask BT his other question. Uh, you know, BT claims that he he's your best friend on the show all the time. <laughs> so, right there. so I I made a mission to make John Lopez my best friend. Okay. So, so uh, I'm gonna try some. Chris is gonna send me a bottle of this OG sauce. Okay. Is, it, is, is it legit? Yeah, it's good, man. I really like it. Um, it's uh, it, it's thin, it's thin, but I like to I, I like to like put it on veggies. I like to put it on all the meat and stuff like that. Yeah, it's it's good stuff. It's spiced. He's been making it at the station for years, so he uh, you know, you we get the we taste tester, huh? Yeah, well, he was bringing in bottles, and we were just like, man, this shit's good. You should call, it, you know. And then we we came to the name OG Sauce. So yeah, you'll like it. It's really really good stuff for sure. Right, because, you know, I'm, I'm a fat boy, so I love my sauces. Hey, so, you know. skinny boys, fat boys, everybody likes the sauce, man. Right. The sauce makes it better. Don't let any, like, hardo 
barbecue like fan so you don't need sauce on my on on my barbecue go ahead, kiss my ass like you need you need the sauce it makes it better so don't don't give me that uh you don't need sauce with my barbecue yeah you do it's it, it makes it better all right vt you have another one for landry yeah so on uh, on your show today b scott was saying that before he didn't really care too much about what certain fans were texting him uh, on the text line and stuff. And I want to know what things do people text him that pisses you the most? Like that's constant that you get all the time when you do your show. See, I, I don't like, it doesn't bother me as much. Like it's, and it's kind of, it's, you got to have, you know, thick skin when it comes to that. But I mean, they'll say anything, man. Like uh, there's, there's all, I mean, there, you, you name it we're getting it. And, and you don't, you don't bring it up. You know, some people will make the mistake of just bringing up, you know, if someone says, you know, Landry's a pussy and a, you know, whatever, like you just, you don't know, just don't bring that to the air. Cause other people don't know about that. Or, you know, like some, some of the other stuff, but they, anything you can imagine them saying, they'll say on there, it's, it's uh it can be fiery. It can be passionate. Um, I, I, I guess the thing that would like, disappoint like would would like annoy me the most and and i'll go back and forth on the text every once in a while but not like you know just you know talking or whatever is if they say something you didn't say that's mm. that's really the problem i have like you can disagree with what i say but just don't say that i said something that i didn't say like uh, i think i think the other day someone said something i didn't even reply to this one but it was like uh you know, before the draft, you were a Bryce Young guy, and now all of a sudden you're saying C.J. Stroud is a franchise quarterback. And it's like, I've never said I think C.J. Stroud is a franchise quarterback. I've yeah. said he's, I've said I like his charisma. I've said we'll see what happens with Slowick. I've said that he's easy to root for. I've never said that. Like, so I think that I, I think y'all can all relate to that. That like mm -hmm. even even you know with what y'all do, and y'all don't have to deal with like four hours of people, you know, giving their in opinion. a bigger base, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but like yeah. even like as long as you're just not saying something that I didn't say, it's kind of that that's that's where it gets really weird for me. So I didn't see Brandon Scott on the show. I, I saw Sway Scott on the show. Yeah, okay. yeah, you know, right. yeah. I don't know where that came from. He just put that on in the middle of the segment. I don't know what my man was doing. He said he said he's getting insecure about the locks. He doesn't like. Uh, he doesn't like where the where the I, I guess Crenshaw, you can relate to this. None none of us can relate to this. Yeah, um, but yeah. Yeah, you definitely can't, Matt. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like he's he's saying he's just not feeling the hair right now. So he just put it, you know, he put he, he decided he wanted to cover it up a little bit. It's hot. That's what it is. <laughs> I uh, could imagine I could imagine having that much hair in this in this heat. heat right, exactly. Crenshaw, you got another question for Landry or are you good? Oh no, I'm pretty pretty good, man. Wreck them tech. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, I got one before we let you go, Landry. Uh, you know, even a fan of uh, a friend of the show, you know, we're passionate. What advice would you give us guys to make this the best of best? Just keep doing y'all's thing. Um, don't be afraid to highlight y'all's opinions. I tell this to VT all the time. You know, sometimes I see the videos and it's uh, you know, it's it's the guest, which is good. Um, but at the end of the day. Uh, you three guys being fans, you three guys being there since day one is what's going to, you know, what people are going to, going to come here for. You know, we can see, we can see interviews all over the place, um, of what these athletes think. But I think, you know, the more that, the more that you guys feel comfortable, uh, showcasing y'all's opinions and just keeping doing what y'all are doing, keeping consistent. Um, I think you're, you're going to be okay. And that's, I think that's the key because it's about to get, it's about to, I mean, let's be honest, like the, the Texans are a more exciting squad. Um, there's probably going to be more people looking for, um, you know, Texans content. Um, the NFL is going on YouTube. I know you guys are on YouTube, so it's only going to grow. But I would just uh, I would just say that, you know, be sure to be sure to showcase what y'all's takes are just as much because, you know, y'all are y'all are the straws that stir the drink on this. And it's, it's gigam, Crenshaw, what Tyler said. You said, oh, you said I thought it was Rick and Tech. <laughs> all right well vt do you, do you have a, a quick question or are you good um i'll ask one really quick question yeah, so good. i know that you're you know you're in the process of moving and stuff and so what was on your playlist um because you had to put up you know probably put furniture together and stuff what were you listening to to get through all that crap man figgy has put me on so if you know me like i'll listen to any i'll listen to any like 
old school South hip hop is what I listen to. So the Swisher House era, I stay in Atlanta. I stay in Memphis. I stay in um, New Orleans. Um, I, I stay South. I do not listen to East Coast. Rap. I don't like it. I've never liked it. It's not like a hard thing. It's just not my thing. Like, it's just not that. Um, so Figgy put has put me on um, finesse two times. And that's that's all I've been listening to now. Like, if you're working out or whatever, it's just kind of like a... Uh, he sounds he he's he's kind of like a mix of Gucci and Young Dolph, and he's 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 like, but I that's all I've been listening to now is uh, finesse two times, and I'll mix in some Webby um, every once in a while. Uh, I saw he was in Houston the other day, looking like a fat dope fiend. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'll I'll mix that in. But I've been on the finesse two times kick really really hard since Figgy put me on it. Hey, he was just enjoying some trill burger, all right, Landry. He, he, man, man, he was enjoying something. I don't know. <laughs> he, he was living his best life, man. You the know. fact that the fact that he was not the fact that he did not just like completely like and I like Savage Life one through three. I'm probably getting a little too in the sticks here, but Savage Life One is like one of my five all time favorite wow. albums. Um, and it's just uh it's just a damn shame. Him and Boosie. And now I think Boosie's going to jail. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. It might be karma too, by the way, for all that talking about gunna snitching. Now it's like Ooh. yeah, it might be some karma there, and we'll see how he handles this situation. I was talking about gunna and TI snitching, and then all of a sudden, boom. Yeah, th th this is uh the test for him, right? I like it. Yeah. yeah. Let's see yeah. what you got. All yeah. right. Well, Landry Man, it's always a pleasure having you on. Uh, like I said, you're one of the uh, the show's great friends. So why don't you tell the listeners where we can find you and what you got cooking? Uh, Chris the, uh, rubbing, yeah, uh, he's rubbing my face. So we got uh, uh, in the loop ten to two Monday through Friday sports radio six ten in the Odyssey app, and then the locker room on YouTube. Uh, the locker room at Landry Locker on the social platform. See, I showed this off to uh, to VT the other day, so we got a little little oh, sign. Can, I love it. You can change it up a little bit, you, you, but yeah, locker room on YouTube. Uh, check that out. So. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm a little jealous. You have you have BT on, but you haven't had me and Chris on yet. Yeah, we're, we're a little, <laughs> yeah, we need to get you. We need to get you guys on. It was actually kind of off the go. What what did you do? What what kind of shit did you start? That that it, it was, was about the Hannah. What wasn't it about the Hannah talk? No, he did something. What did you do? It, it was the it was me trolling uh, Browns fans with oh, the video. Yes, of yes, yes, the Browns fans. Yes. Yes, but we'll definitely we'll definitely have to do it for you sure. You never know what BT does. BT always got somebody. somebody when do you up. sleep, brother? I don't. <laughs> no, really. When do you sleep, sir? No wonder you're fainting and having to cancel road trip. <laughs> I mean, my man is like it, you. You wake up from the morning, and you guys all know this. You you whenever you do it, you open up the Twitter app, and this dude's arguing about damn climate change or something like that at five a.m. <laughs> Whatever the hell he decides he's going to argue about. The first thing I see in my feed is it's it's 546 a.m. And VT's arguing about, I don't know, pa road pavements or something like that. You never know. <laughs> oh, man, good stuff. Speaking of VT and Twitter, tell us where we can find you at, bub. Uh, at Lancy Locker on Twitter. Uh, and then I, I just signed up for that other thing, whatever that is. That, uh, Spill or whatever. What, what's it called? The What's the new? Blue Social? No, nah, there's a new Who's one I? that just came out today. Uh, Still? Threads. Threads. Oh, Threads. Yeah, so Threads is, like, connected to Instagram. It's a new thing. It's it's actually kind of popping right now. I think Zuckerberg started it or something. So, yeah, Threads. Uh, at Landry Locker on everything, though. All right. Well, VT, we are you guys, man. Yeah, thank you for coming on. We appreciate it. Camp? Are we going to see any of y'all at camp, or is that – yeah, um, I should be at camp. I don't know which day, but I'm gonna be the okay. maybe maybe the Saturday at six o'clock, man. Because you know, okay. nine o'clock in the morning, I might faint out there, man. Hey, My poor VT, huh? They got the water. You'll you'll be good, man. It's it's a uh, it's the heat, baby. But yeah, I appreciate y'all, man. I'm gonna go to Home Depot. I gotta I gotta pick out some curtains. So the exciting the exciting uh, process is coming through. Got to get there before they close at ten. So. Yeah, hey, um, that the light back there remind me of back in the day in my old room when I used to do my thing. Oh, okay. Okay. Hey, <laughs> now, now you, now you, now you, man, that, that's, that's, that's too much between the light, like you, between you doing that and, uh, VT doing whatever the hell he's doing late night. There's some late night activities going on here. You can find us on OnlyFans. You know what I mean? 
All right. <laughs> I can't. Someone can, maybe. Not me. <laughs> All right, baby. Thank All you right. for coming on, man. Appreciate Thanks, y'all. Man. Appreciate it. Peace. And BT, tell us where we can find you on social media and what you got cooking. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Brown Chubby Bear. You can find me um, also. We we do me and Leo do this after hours, and it's not an OnlyFans thing that <laughs> either do a recorded space or we do a Zoom. Um, we didn't do it last week because of some schedule conflicts, but we should be doing it tomorrow. So check me out at Brown Chubby Bear and check Leo out at Leo is Forgiven. We record the podcast and put it on um, the same audio podcast channel that you find Texas Fan Battle on. So check that out. Yes, sir. It's good stuff, guys. So definitely check it out. Uh, Crenshaw, what about you? Yeah, you can find me at Fifth Ward Crenshaw everywhere and go Texans. And you can find me at A1 Day One Texans. Uh, you can find me and MBT both on the Fan Battle Sports Network where we write some good articles. Uh, and you can also find me Sunday on AFC South Fan Battle where I trash talk the Jags, Colts, and Specialty Titans because they're crybabies. Uh, and you can find the podcast, Texans Fan Battle, everywhere. So make sure you tune in. Till then, guys, have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you later. This is Crenshaw Briggs and VT. We want the touchdown. We're not trying to go for three.